In this presentation, we will look at how our bodies convert fuel sources into energy. As we begin to look at this, there are a couple of key concepts to keep in mind. First is that our primary energy yielding compounds that we are going to be looking at include glucose, which is derived primarily from carbohydrates, fatty acids and glycerol, which come from triglycerides, and amino acids, which come from protein. The second key concept to remember is that ATP, or adenosine triphosphate, is our body's energy currency. That ATP has those high energy phosphate bonds that can be broken to release energy so our bodies can do work. On the screen, you see a basic metabolic pathway that leads to energy production. We will look at the four key compounds that we talked about, glucose, fatty acids, glycerol, and amino acids, and look at where they enter this pathway and how they move down the pathway in order to yield the ATP that we need for energy. Let's first look at glucose. Glucose is really our body's preferred energy source. It can very easily use glucose and convert it into ATP. The first step in the breakdown of glucose is called glycolysis. This is when glucose is converted to pyruvate. In this process, some ATP is produced. It's not a really large amount, it's fairly small, but it is a quick process for giving our body a little bit of ATP, so providing a little bit of energy. The pyruvate is then converted to acetyl-CoA, which then goes on to move through the TCA, or Krebs cycle. From the Krebs cycle, we move on to the electron transport chain, and that's really where the vast majority of ATP is produced, so really where most of the energy comes from. One thing to keep in mind with this process, basically once we get down to acetyl-CoA, through that process our body requires oxygen in order to move on down through the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain. So this is an aerobic pathway, requires adequate oxygen to be present in order for glucose to move all the way through the pathway to the electron transport chain to produce that large amount of ATP. Sometimes there is inadequate oxygen present for glucose to move all the way through this metabolic pathway. This may happen, for example, during intense exercise. In this case, glucose will be converted to pyruvate, and when there's a buildup of pyruvate because not enough oxygen is available for it to move down the cycle, pyruvate will be converted to lactate. The lactate can then go to the liver and be reconverted into glucose via the Cori cycle. So this is a way that our body can then regenerate the glucose, which can go through glycolysis again, meaning that conversion from glucose to pyruvate. And remember, during glycolysis, at least some ATP is produced. So this anaerobic pathway of the Cori cycle allows our body to have some energy production when there's not enough oxygen present, so when we're in an anaerobic situation. Remember, however, that ideally, for more energy production, we have plenty of oxygen so glucose can continue down the pathway to the electron transport chain where it can generate much more ATP than just through glycolysis. Now let's take a look at where fat enters this cycle. First of all, remember triglycerides are the primary, primary form of fat found both in our body storage and in the food we eat. So we'll really look at the breakdown products of triglycerides, which are glycerol and fatty acids. Also remember from triglycerides that glycerol is the backbone of the triglyceride, which makes up a very small proportion of the molecule. So most of what we get from triglycerides in terms of energy is fatty acids. Glycerol, so again that smaller portion of the triglyceride, enters this cycle at pyruvate. So glycerol can go to pyruvate, which then can go down the cycle to the electron transport chain and produce that large amount of ATP. Glycerol could also, if there was not adequate oxygen present, go on through the Cori cycle as we just reviewed to convert to lactate and then regenerate some glucose. 
fatty acids enter the pathway at acetyl-CoA. So fatty acids then also move down the pathway into the electron transport chain. One key concept here with where fatty acids enter is that they enter below the place that there's an option for an anaerobic pathway. By that I mean they come in at acetyl-CoA. That acetyl-CoA cannot be converted back up to pyruvate and then go through the anaerobic pathway. So when we're using fatty acids as an energy source, they can only go down the pathway and remember that portion of the pathway requires that adequate oxygen is present. So if we are going to tap into fatty acids as a fuel source, we must have adequate oxy oxygen, so we must be in an aerobic state. Again, also remember that those fatty acids are the bulk of the triglyceride. Although the glycerol can enter further up the pathway, it's a very small proportion of the molecule. So essentially for using fat, we really need aerobic conditions. The last nutrient that we're going to look at as far as entering the pathway is amino acids. When we think about amino acids as an energy source, remember we really don't want to be using our body's stores of amino acids as an energy source because really the only way our body has to store amino acids is in muscle tissue or other tissues throughout our body. And we don't want to be breaking down tissue to provide energy or breaking down muscle to provide energy. But we can use amino acids from the protein foods that we eat to derive energy. Amino acids can be broken down into two primary categories as far as the, this metabolic pathway goes, glucogenic and ketogenic. This differs where they will enter the pathway. Glucogenic amino acids enter this pathway at pyruvate, and ketogenic amino acids enter this pathway at acetyl-CoA. As long as our body needs energy, both of these types of amino acids will move down through the pathway, again through the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain to produce that ATP. Glucogenic amino acids could also be used through the anaerobic pathway, the Cori cycle, to generate glucose if necessary. However, ketogenic acids would only be able to move down the pathway through to the electron transport chain, so would need oxygen to be present for that to happen. In summary, we have looked at how the three energy yielding nutrients enter the basic metabolic pathway in order to provide our bodies with energy. So the breakdown product of carbohydrates is primarily glucose. That enters at the top of the pathway and can go all the way down through to the electron transport chain to pr pr produce a lot of energy. The first step in glucose breakdown is glycolysis, which does produce some ATP, so can give us a quick burst of energy. The pyruvate can also go through an anaerobic process of the Cori cycle in order to regenerate some glucose. We then looked at the breakdown products of triglycerides being glycerol and fatty acids, noting that glycerol enters the pathway at pyruvate and fatty acids enter at acetyl-CoA. Remember that the fatty acids are the largest part of the molecule and it will require oxygen in order for fatty acids to move down the pathway to the Krebs cycle and electron transport chain in order to produce all of that ATP that we're looking for. And finally, amino acids either enter at pyruvate or acetyl-CoA depending on the type of amino acids and these can also provide our bodies with ATP or energy.